What's happening, Packer fans? Welcome into the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack a Day Podcast. Please make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Let's jump right away into today's episode, and that's going to be discussing the Packers position groups and kind of ranking them from 11 to 1, worst to best, however you want to look at it. And honestly, frankly, this was a lot harder to do than I kind of expected it to be as I originally kind of you know thought about the episode and uh, how to put the groups together. I think a lot of these groups are pretty evenly matched. Some player, some position groups have a little bit more star power, but maybe not the depth. Um, others have solid depth. Like it's, it's just, it's, in, it's an interesting process to kind of sort through these. And honestly, frankly, if you want to put these in any other order, I probably wouldn't have too much of an argument with you. And how I'm ranking these is as the roster stands today. So we're just going to assume that all players on the roster are here and happy and want to be in Green Bay and there's no issues whatsoever going on and they're all going to be happy Packers as the season starts. So I'll just leave that as is and we're going to assume that going into today's show. So number 11, and uh, again, this is going to go from maybe least talented or worst depth or worst to best, however you want to view it. I don't think any of these positions are necessarily worst or terrible or awful, but we'll rank them nonetheless. And number 11 on my list is going to be linebacker, specifically, I guess, inside linebacker, off-ball linebacker, dependent upon how you want to look at it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I think this is the position that has the most question marks, right? So is there a star on this in this group right now? No, right? And I'm not saying maybe some of them can't develop into stars, but there's no stars. Is there great depth within this position group? No, there's not. So I don't think I don't think there's going to be much argument to say that that off-ball linebacker is the the biggest question mark and maybe the worst current position group on the Packers roster. They haven't put a ton of resources into this position either. Now the top of that linebacker group starts with Chris Barnes. And I really do like Chris Barnes. And I do think he's going to take another step forward this season. And I think he can be a really nice player in the middle of that Packers defense. And I've said multiple times that this Packers defense was better last year when Chris Barnes was on the field. Now, how high is his ceiling? How good can he be? Does he have a sophomore slump? Um, Can he improve upon last year's performance? Like All of those are active questions. And then the questions after that continue to remain. Kamal Martin, I know a lot of people really like Kamal Martin. And I should start by saying Kamal Martin was to me the best rookie in training camp a season ago, bar none. He consistently made plays, consistently flashed. That did not show up on tape on Sundays. I have a lot of questions left of Kamal Martin. And that's not to say he can't be good. He has a lot of tools. He has a lot of potential. And I'm not jumping to any conclusions after last year's rookie season for any rookies, mostly due to no OTAs, no mini camps, no exhibition, limited training camp, et cetera. So he could still be great, but I still have plenty of question marks, especially based on what he put on tape in 2020. Ty Summers. I know there's a big Ty Summers fan club out there, and I really like Ty Summers as well. But again, based on what he's put on tape at the linebacker position, still plenty of question marks. Really liked what he showed in OTAs. Very vocal, just a, just what a week ago. Uh, very vocal. Uh, was really taking the defense and 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 leading it. But you know, making the calls, doing all those sort of things. You could tell he was taking a leadership approach to that inside linebacker position. You love to see that. Does that help you, you know, play a linebacker better? We'll see. But I'm intrigued to see what he brings to the table, but there's still question marks there. Isaiah McDuffie, Oren Burks, all of those players still plenty of question marks. And I don't think there's any of those guys that you can plug in and say, all right, we're good to go. Linebacker set. And again, I think Chris Barnes is going to have the first opportunity to win that starting job. He was first in OTAs. Um, again, best when he was on the field of the, the rest of that linebacker group a season ago. So I expect him to take a jump and I expect him to be a nice player, but there's still plenty of question marks in that group. No superstar, questionable depth. Um, and overall, I think that's a position that right now is the worst of the Packers position groups. Number 10, I'm going defensive line. And it's it's tough to put this here because when you have a player of the caliber of Kenny Clark on a defensive line, that's worth a lot in and of itself. But outside of Kenny Clark, it's it's basically like inside linebacker position, but with an all pro, almost all pro caliber player at the interior defensive line spot. You got Kenny Clark, and then you have all those same question marks we basically just went over at inside linebacker that carry over to defensive line. 
Dean Lowry has had a couple meh seasons. Uh, Tyler Lancaster, basically the same. Kingsley Kiki still developing, maybe not quite as fast as some of us had maybe hoped, but still on the the up and up. Um, you, you know, and I th- I just think what you know you've got Willington Prevalon. Of course, they spend uh, the fifth round draft choice, um, but overall you know, still a lot of question marks. And I love TJ Slayton, as you guys heard the other day as I was going through his deep dive. But I still think, you know, he's a fifth round pick and it's not like you can just expect him to come in and and change the world along the defensive line. The end of the day right now, this is Kenny Clark and eh, right? So Kenny Clark still needs help and Kingsley Kiki could take a step. TJ Slayton could be a player that is a, a nice rotational piece this season. Dean Lowry can play better than he did a season ago. I don't think there's any questions about that. Tyler Lancaster, if he's your fifth best defensive lineman, you're in a good spot there. Just me- means you need Lowry and Lancaster and Slayton to all be better than him and outplay him. Wellington Prevalon is a player that I'm intrigued by as an undrafted free agent a season ago. So they have some pieces there led by Kenny Clark. I still shudder to think what happens if Kenny Clark goes out for any period of time. And I do think they're doing Kenny Clark a disservice by not giving him better running mates on that defensive line to play alongside of him. Next up is the interior of the offensive line. And this is a really interesting one to kind of think about. So this comes in at number nine. And first of all, you're led by Elton Jenkins. So again, that's a heck of a start. They just spent a second round pick on Josh Myers. You've got a Lucas Patrick who's played solid. We know Billy Turner can kick inside if you need him. Um, We know that they've got a John Runyon Jr. They just spent a ton of draft picks on Royce Newman, Simon Stepaniak, Jake Hansen, etc. So there's some interesting depth and some developing players along the interior of the offensive line. But right now it's still Elton Jenkins and then either you know, replacement level players or young rookies that we just don't know what they're going to be yet. And I think, again, you can plug Elton Jenkins into any of those spots. We expect Billy Turner to be out at right tackle. And then you've got Lucas Patrick, who's fine and is worthy of a starting spot if you need him in that spot. I don't think he's going to lose you games being in there, but he's not an upper echelon player at that spot. You know, and then you've got rookies and second year players who are unproven. So until some of those questions get answered, I have trouble putting the spot ahead of number nine. And you also could have Elton Jenkins needing to kick the tackle um, either for David Bakhtiari or if injuries happen. And now that position gets even a little bit more watered down. So right now that's where I'm at. I think there's a lot of opportunity for this interior offensive line to be really good over time. I mean, you could have Elton Jenkins, John Runyon Jr., Royce Newman be the, you know, Josh Myers, you know, you've got four guys there, even a Simon Stepaniak, four or five guys who could be a really intriguing, you know, long-term offensive line here. So uh, on the interior. So I, I think there's potential. I think there's some really nice players, but I still think there's a lot of question marks that need to get answered. Number eight is tight end, and this is another really interesting one. Again, I think this is why you can rank these in so many different ways. Robert Tunyon, really nice player. Some of last year was due to scheme. Some of it was due to his playmaking, and he certainly took a major step, and Green Bay seems to have found their overall tight end who's capable of doing a variety of different things. He was better as a blocker than people thought. He caught the ball well, made some plays after the catch, caught a ton of touchdowns. He was an all-around good tight end. Then you've got Mercedes Lewis as one of the best blocking tight ends in football. You've got Josiah DeGuara as an H-back. Dominique Daphne looked good as an H-back. I'm kind of combining the two positions here. And then you've got Jay Sternberger, who, while we don't know exactly what his ceiling is or what he can be, he still represents some decent potential at that position. So you don't have maybe like a top 10, I don't even want to say that because I don't want to limit Tunyon there, but like I don't think you like look at this position and say like there's a bona fide star on the team. And you can make the argument that Tonyan should have been a pro bowler a season ago. And I wouldn't argue it with you too much. Uh, but I, I still don't necessarily say that I would put him in the like star category yet of like him being a star player. I still think he's a step behind that. And then you've got role players. And that's not a bad thing. And they've got great depth at the position. And again, if this is a, a position that's like the eighth best position on your team, you're in a good spot. That's why the Packers are so good is because they have talented players at almost every position. So Tenen comes at number eight. Again, if you want to bump them up further than that, I am all ears and I have no problem with that whatsoever. Number seven is corner. And this is another, again, really interesting position. Jair Alexander is maybe the best player at his position in the NFL, certainly in the top three. And I'm not arguing anywhere outside of the top five. Like he is a top five through and through, I think top three, and you can make an argument top one, right? So you have that. 
And then again, you start getting into those question marks, but with pretty decent depth and quite a few options. Kevin King is back. Your mileage may vary on, on how good Kevin King is and who he is as a player. Eric Stokes, they just got as a first round pick. They just drafted Shamar Jean Charles. They got Shannon Sullivan back. They still have Kadar Hallman. They still have Josh Jackson. They still have KB and Ento. Like, it's a pretty good group overall of corners on this roster. And I, when you're led by Jair Alexander, and you have a star on the team, and then you've got intriguing players as depth, that's pretty good. And Kevin King, man, he, he's going to break you know your heart at some point through the course of the season. But he he goes through some some stretches where he's he looks good, he looks really good. And then he goes through some stretches where he looks not so great. He goes through some stretches where he's injured and can't play. We know the inconsistencies there. We've seen some of the inconsistencies with Chandon. Um, we don't know what Eric Stokes is yet. We don't know what Shamar Jean Charles is yet. So there's still a lot of question marks at the cornerback position, but led by Jair Alexander and just using a first round pick, I'm going to put them at number seven. Next up on my list is safety, number six. And this is again, another really interesting case study. Darnell Savage and Adrian Amos, fantastic duo at safety. Really excited about the prospects of them in this Joe Barry defense. But after that, a ton of question marks again. Will Redmond, you've got, you've got Vernon Scott, you've got Henry Black. Like, you've got some interesting players, but very unproven players. Raven Green is gone. Vernon Scott maybe has the ability to play some in the box. Amos could play some in the box. Savage could play some in that slot position. But if all of a sudden those two guys, if Savage is in the slot, Amos is in the box, who are your safeties? You go, you're rolling out Vernon Scott and Will Redmond. So those are all really, really interesting, you know, dynamics and decisions that Green Bay is going to have to make at that safety position over the course of the next, you know, well, this season and maybe beyond. But I, I love the top two. And when you have two good safeties, that puts you in a much better position than most of the NFL. And I think Green Bay has that. And I still think uh, Savage has a ways to go. I mean, I mean, he has, he can get that much better still. I still think he can be a Pro Bowl player in this league. So that's going to be a really interesting tandem. And then I still think you, Vernon Scott, Henry Black, you know, I think those guys have some potential to step up and play even better. So I'm going to put that at number six. Number five is offensive tackle. Again, a really interesting one here. And again, you can move this down dependent upon where you view things. David Bakhtiari, injured, but arguably the best left tackle in football. Billy Turner looks solid, if not spectacular at right tackle when he played and got to play there consistently a season ago. Add in the fact that Elton Jenkins can play either of those positions well in a pinch. You draft Royce Newman, and then you've got some question marks and Yash Nijman and some of the younger you know, tackles. Can they even play tackle? Newman's a part of that. Cole Van Landen's a part of that. So they've got some things to figure out. And the fact that Bakhtiari's hurt, you know, and, and you know, Elton Jenkins is primarily an interior player. You don't know that you have that true swing tackle. There's questions to be asked here. And you could again bump this position down if you wanted to. But I think if healthy, when you have David Bakhtiari and Billy Turner with the ability for Elton Jenkins to swing out, play either of those spots, still a Royce Newman uh, to potentially be able to swing out, John Runyon Jr. to potentially swing out, like you've you've got a lot of options there. And I think because of that, it's gonna come in number five on my list. Number four is wide receiver. Again, led by Devontae Adams. I really, I really like the overall talent profiles and the different flavors of wide receiver. This is the first time I felt really great about the different flavors that Green Bay has at wide receiver, the, the basketball team, if you will, the, the different skill sets of players. Adams is your alpha. He can do everything, right? Then you've got MVS as the speed guy on the outside. You've got Amari Rogers as the gadget slot guy. Um, then you've got Alan Lazard as the possession receiver, do it all, like kind of the grind it out, run blocker, block for the wide receiver screens, like just kind of like the, the glue guy, right? And then you've got Equinemia St. Brown, who can be more of a possession receiver over the middle, but with a little uh, run after the catch ability. And then you've got a Devin Funches, who again is a bigger possession receiver who can almost be used as a small tight end. He can be used as a red zone threat, possession guy, but a pretty good route runner can play outside in the slot, etc. I love that different group, differing you know profiles of wide receivers. And Without a Devontae Adams, this group probably gets pushed back quite a bit. But when you've got the arguably the best receiver in football leading that group, and then you've got all those different profiles to help you out dependent upon what you need out on the field, I really like this, this group of weapons at disposal for Matt LaFleur and hopefully Aaron Rodgers. Number three is edge rusher. Again, another really interesting position. Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, 
on paper looks fantastic. You go back to a season ago, Sedarius Smith definitely took a step back from where he was in 2019. Preston Smith took a significant step back from where he was in 2019. Rashawn Gary progressed, but maybe not quite to the point that some people were hoping. Still good season, but maybe not great season. And then you don't have anything proven after that. You've got, you know, Jonathan Garvin, you've got Randy Ramsey, you've got Tipinaliai, you know, you've got some pieces there. Maybe Delonte Scott if they put him out at that position finally. But overall, it's the top three who again didn't perform up to expectations collectively a season ago, and then question marks. So overall, I really like the prospects of this group. And I think Gary Smith and Smith has the ability to be one of the best edge rusher groups in all of football but they have to play closer, especially Preston and Zedarius to what they were in 2019. Rashawn Gary needs to take that big step in 2021. If they do that, look the heck out. If they don't, this position could be ranked significantly lower. Number two is running back. And this is an interesting conversation here, but number, I mean, Aaron Jones, when you have Aaron Jones can do everything and he's still in the prime of his career. You can use him, you know, as a receiving back. You can use him as a power back. You can use like, I mean, he's not a power back, but you get my point. Like he's good in short yardage situations. Um, He's an overall running back that can do everything that you need him to do, especially in this Matt LaFleur offense. And I'm very bullish on AJ Dillon, especially as a number two. I think that's going to be a significant upgrade from what Jamal Williams brought to the table over the last couple of seasons. And I think those two combined can be one of the best one-two punches in all of the NFL at running back. And then you add in at number three, a player like Kylan Hill, who I think has a ton of potential uh, to be a really sound number three running back. And even if not, even if things don't pan out there, a really good competition brewing between a Patrick Taylor, a Kylan Hill, a Dexter Williams, uh, that, 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 competition is really, really intriguing to me. But this is led by Jones and Dylan. And if if Jones goes out tomorrow and doesn't play this season, and you told me AJ Dillon had 1500 yards, 12 touchdowns, 200 receiving yards, another touchdown receiving, something like that, I'd say, yeah, that sounds about right. That's how talented I think this duo is. And if they're both out there, um, you know, even on the field at the same time, I think there's a lot of potential there. And I'm putting them all the way up at number two on this list. And then last but not least, number one for now, is quarterback. You start with the MVP of the league, you're probably going to be pretty high on any position group listing, right? And when it's the most position, important position in all of sports and you've got the MVP at that position, even better. It starts and ends with Aaron Rodgers. We'll see what happens there. And then you back it up with a first round pick from a season ago who's shown some growth over, you know, even season over season, just what we even saw in OTAs. You know, he looked a little bit more comfortable, not really willing to, to crown anything here, but, um, you know, you have all that potential. And then frankly, if you went into the season with a Blake Bortles as your number three quarterback, that's a pretty good group. This is a player that ultimately was in an AFC championship game that he should have won just a few seasons ago with Nathaniel Hackett as offensive coordinator. Like Rogers love Bortles is a pretty darn good group, but heck you could have Rogers, me and you, and I might still rank that group number one on the list, assuming Aaron Rodgers is there. So Really like the group overall. Jordan Love backing up. Blake Bortles is a number three for now. I think they're worth number one if everyone's still in the building when the season starts. But of course, that's the million dollar question with where we're at right now. Thanks so much for joining me today. Appreciate it as always. I'm going to be right back here tomorrow as I am 365 days a year. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.